All right, here we are, guys. Um, so the first thing is understanding the lock and the control points, uh, how you develop power in the position. So uh, we're gonna we're gonna talk about the straight ankle lock. Um, but let's just get started on it. We'll, we'll talk about foot placement. Um, the grip is is half of it, and then foot placement and how you generate power is the other half. That's what makes the straight ankle lock really devastating, and people not understanding. Um, how important these two aspects are, the grip and the power sources, that's what kind of makes it a hit or miss technique for some people. So it's definitely more of a hit technique than miss for me, and I think this is why. So let me share it with you guys. <clears throat> so um, a lot of ways you can get it from standing. I don't want to focus on that right now. I want to focus on the actual lock itself. What's going to happen is um, this is what most people do, and it's fine. You can tap people out like this. That, that's great but it, it gets me away from uh, some of the key points that I'm looking for. I'm gonna take my hand and make a little bit of a fist and curl my wrist, all right? And I'm focusing on this bone here on my wrist, just the same bone wrestlers use to cross face. Um, Billy Robinson used to call it the cutting bone here. And I'm gonna just curl my wrist and scoop right at his Achilles tendon, just past the heel, and pull his toes right up into my armpit, okay? You see how my elbow's flared there? That, that opens up my arm and it allows me to just shoot his ankle straight into my armpit, all right? Now what I wanna do is maintain a good squeeze here, kind of like when you do a guillotine and you grab your wrist here and your, your shoulders on the back of the neck and you're pulling your, your wrist up and making that really tight. It's that same kind of idea. I don't want this hand down here by my hip. It's one of the problems I have with this lock is it's down here by my hip. I want this fulcrum as high as possible. So when I scoop this, I put those toes in my armpit and I have my wrist as close to my sternum as possible. Here, all right? Now, I can do this with one hand or I can reinforce it just like a guillotine and get an even higher fulcrum. It depends on the timing of the move. I like to scoop it with one hand. Now, I'm gonna control his knee, put my foot behind his butt and then scoop my heel up to his hip. It's really important that this heel is up because if your toes are facing this way and he starts flopping because he's scared of something, this foot's gonna cross and then you've got that whole knee reaping problem. So I'm gonna have this heel up, my toes are faced in the proper uh, direction and I'm able to drive off this heel and it's really powerful. And I don't have to worry about reaping the knee. All right, another key point here, I want, I want this leg to be bent. I don't want it to be straight. If I'm down here far from the leg, stretching the leg out, it's easier for him to put in like a De La Hiva type hook or open my legs up and pry himself away. I don't want that to happen. So I'm gonna be in here as close to him as possible. Butt to butt, all right? My heel's up, my knees are pinched, okay? And I'm on my side. I need to lay on this side for, you know, because of the rules in the IBJJF. I can't be doing the ankle lock with the leg on top. So here I am, let's talk about what's going on here. I'm gonna be able to drive off of my heel, okay, to create a lot of power. I'm also gonna be driving off this shin. So I'm driving off of his body, and then I have my hips, which are gonna be extending, all right? This is, this is, we're talking about the power sources now. And then the final thing is gonna be me looking away and getting my back involved. Okay, those are all power sources. And there he taps from the power sources. Now we're gonna add in the grip, okay? Toes are in the armpit. My fulcrum is really high, it's not down here. And in a perfect world, I'll be able to scoop it and then reinforce it. I don't always have to do that. I can do it one-handed as well. I'll do it one-handed to start. Big detail here, don't fall to your side, okay? What you wanna do is get a nice torque action by pulling your elbow to your spine and putting your weight on your shoulder. All right now, this is locked in really tight. All of my body weight is controlling the ankle. And as soon as I start to drive and put my hips in and look away, he's gonna tap, see? So like he's already tapping. As soon as I go, he's tapping. Of course, if I have this reinforced, you really don't get very far at all. Because once I start to pull up, is that, that fulcrum, just another quarter of an inch, causes a ridiculous amount of pain. Boom. All right, let's look at where we're at here now. 
Okay. So um, one of the big, the big problems here, it's not really a problem, but it's going gonna, it's gonna to not put as much pressure on your opponent, is a lot of guys will just fall to their side here, and then they'll start to stretch. And, and you know, of course, I can still tap him here. It's going to take a little more energy. I really want to torque his ankle by pulling my elbow to my spine. See, he taps just on that motion, guys. It's a huge difference between this and this. My shoulder goes to the ground, I slightly lift my hips, and then I, then I activate my power sources behind a really good grip. There, he taps. It doesn't take much when this fulcrum's high, the toes are in your armpit, and then you close your elbow. Conversely, when the grip's not so good, that's when you have to use so much power, and then how much confidence are you gonna have when you're in the absolute division trying to do an ankle lock? You don't have a very good grip, and you're trying to force it, and you gotta go like 100%. You'll get away with it sometimes, but it won't be as effective if you, uh, if you don't focus on that grip, getting low in the ankle, toes in the armpit so he can't put the boot on, he can't defend it, and then getting all of your weight binding that foot up. Once that foot's binded up, it tends to be less flexible. And then look at how little I have to go. Boom, he taps. Okay, so um, just a little real-time uh, basic straight anchor lock so you can kind of see the movement. Um, I'm here, typical situation. He's on his back. Scoot this way a little, all right. My knee's up. I don't stay here very long, but maybe I'm looking to pass. He puts his foot on my hip. This is uh, probably, you know, the most common situation I find myself attacking the straight ankle. I scoop it up, close my elbow. You see my hips are close to his. With one hand, here, my wrist is curled, and I look away. There he is, he taps. Super easy. I'm doing it quickly, but you can see my foot's in the right place. My knees are pinched, my hips are close to him, and I'm closing that elbow. That closing the elbow, I lift my hips and look away. I'm activating my back, my hips, and my feet, all behind a really nice tight grip, causing the tap. He doesn't really have much of a choice.